Hi, I'm Los Vogel Sharp. Today is January 16th, 2019. And um, for a couple days now, God's been um, talking to me about reprobate minds. And he wants me to explain to you about reprobate minds. Two scriptures that you could go to. One is 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, and Romans 1, 28. And um, it basically talks about reprobate minds. And let me just give you the meaning of what reprobate means according to the dictionary. A reprobate mind is basically called an unprincipled person, a degenerate, depraved, which means morally corrupt, wicked. They're indifferent to human life. They're perverted. They're unprincipled. Unprincipled means not acting in accordance with moral principles dishonest. It's a combination of all those things. Romans 128, it goes into the whole thing about they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. He actually uses the word reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And it goes down and it lists all the things that they did. They were backbiters, murderers, deceitful, debate Debaters, whisperers. What's a whisperer? Someone that's whispering behind your back about you. Or is out there talking about you. These are all things that God's people should not be doing. And in Timothy, alright, I'm going to read you in Timothy what it says, okay? Timothy, 2 Timothy 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, false accusers. Think about that one. Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. It goes down to explain all these things that they are. Traitors. Heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. It tells you have nothing to do with these kind of people because they're not Christians. It doesn't matter if they call themselves a Christian. They're not Christians because the Bible says you know them by their fruits. Anybody that is out there condemning another person and making their quest into doing nothing but that in their lives is not acting Christ-like. And we have to get this, church, because we are following a lot of people on YouTube and listening to them. God said to me this morning to ask you this. If the devil stood in front of you and started having a conversation with you, what would you do about it? Would you stand there and listen? Would you rebuke them in the name of Jesus? Would you run the other way? Would you sit down and make yourself comfortable and sit there and listen to them for an hour? Like you do on YouTube with people talking from the pits of hell? That's the point he wants to make right now. Who are you listening to on YouTube? And why are you listening to them? If you know they're not speaking words, godly words to you, and they're talking all manner of evil and things that are not right. Why would we listen to it? It's like sitting and listening to Satan himself. Because these are his demonic forces. The Nephilim, all right? The, the spirits left from the angels having sex with women and creating hybrids. Basically hybrids. Human, angelic. All these Nephilim, the spirits of the giants are roaming about and they're looking for human bodies to take over and use so they can accomplish their purposes which is to do what backbiting bickering lying deceiving murder adultery you name it they're looking to do it because they don't care they don't follow god they never did follow god and they're going to burn in hell for eternity because of it any human being that is not following god and has not accepted Jesus, 
as the Lord of their life to wash them free from their sinful natures and the sins that we have committed cannot get into a, a holy heaven where a holy God reigns where Jesus is who is holy too and the Holy Spirit who comes into us he's holy he leads us and directs us to all holiness how do reprobate minds operate how does the devil come to us what does the Bible tell us he comes as an angel of light that's what he did with Eve and Adam in, in the garden he came as a nice guy all right and he had a conversation with Eve and she listened and he told her well God's trying to hold something back from you if you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you'll get all this knowledge you're not gonna die he told the half-truth because she didn't drop dead right there but death came in the minute she ate from it and she gave it to her husband who the Bible says was right there with her we think of Adam that he wasn't there and the devil was having a conversation with Eve and you know she was the fool that fell into it, the trap and meanwhile Adam was about tiptoeing through the tulips having a good old time walking in the Garden of Eden while his wife fell into this whole sin no he was right there with her the Bible says which means he stood there and probably listened to the whole conversation that the devil was having knowing what God had told him not to do don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil don't do it he said so Adam knew Eve was deceived the Bible said the devil deceived her with his enticements and his charismatic nature that he has that's how the Antichrist is going to rise up with his charismatic nature and his seductiveness of pulling in those that are ignorant to the truth and that's how the demonic forces the Nephilim that's how they get you they get you through your ignorance and your lack of knowledge and your flesh and your wanting to please the flesh rather than please God lovers of self rather than lovers of God the Bible says so in the end times and it specifically mentions the end times which we are in it is obvious round about us the reprobate minds of what is going on in our world today to know for a fact that we are in the end times now at what point do you pre-tribbers think we're leaving this is where we have to get a heads up here when are we getting out because the wrath of God is coming on the earth let me tell you something when the Bible says the wrath of God is not meant for God's people that's exactly what it means because we're washed in the blood of Jesus and the wrath will not come upon us but you're forgetting one major thing that the Bible talks about persecution and from the get-go there was nothing but persecution against God's people and it's going to continue and in the end times that persecution level is going to go up 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 because as people turn away from God and followers of God into followers of their own lusts and their own self pleasures the knowledge of God just disappears and they become wrapped up in the devil and what the devil's dumping on them and then that opens up to these demonic forces to come and oppress you on the outside and start to influence your lives when you entertain that then it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger and then it will possess your mind and then it gets to the point where it's almost impossible to walk away from it it's a real battle you're in once you become obsessed with something there are those out on YouTube that are obsessed about me personally and saying things it's obsessed it's obsessiveness any kind of an obsessiveness is not from God I don't care what you might think it, its purpose is it's an obsession people are obsessed over smoking people are obsessed over sex people are obsessed over drinking people are obsessed over food people are obsessed over gossip we become obsessed over these things and how does that happen to us because we get into ourselves we get into what we desire and the flesh the flesh wants to take over us our flesh is in our way we have to cast down the imagination and everything that tries to exalt itself above the most high God the Bible tells us 
Our flesh is being tempted by the devil every single day. Every day. But the more you walk in the spirit, the devil can't get you anymore. Because you walk out of that flesh. And you start to walk in the spirit realm. And you follow the leading of the spirit every day. The leading of the spirit is what? To love one another. To walk in the fire and the power of God and to stay away from all sin and do the works that Jesus did on the earth which is to bring the salvation message to everyone. Reprobate minds are here already. Therefore, we are in the end times. The rapture, the gathering up in the Bible, if you read it, the gathering up is for the bride of Jesus to be gathered up and to meet him in the air and to come back with him on the earth and to rule and reign with our Lord. That's for the true bride of Jesus. The rapture is not so we can get out of here before the wrath hits. It does not say that in the Bible anywhere. It's the gathering up of the bride of Jesus. And during all these tribulations that we go through, that's how we become the bride. Because the more you suffer in this life, the more you lay down your life. And you stop fighting. What happens when a person gets very ill and they die? In the beginning, they get angry usually. There's different phases, what they call for death. A lot of times it's anger. Then you, you, you fight with all that you are to live. Because it's in us to survive. And we fight. It becomes a battle for, for your life. But then you get to the point, as your body is failing and getting weaker and weaker, you get to the point where you surrender. You surrender and you say, you know something? I can't, I can't, I can't heal myself. You realize that you're powerless in yourself and you hand yourself over to the one who can truly heal you which is God it's called humility and recognition that there's there's an almighty God that is way above us and way beyond and he's the one that makes the rules he's the one that says what is sin and what is not sin and he's the one that we follow and the way into the kingdom is through Jesus. Because he's the one that died to set us free on the cross from our sins. And he's the name that was given to us to use against all manner of evil that we deal with in this world. The rapture is not to set us free from the wrath of God. Because God, during the wrath time, says in Isaiah 26, 20-21 what we're supposed to do. He tells us to go behind closed doors for a little while while my indignation pours out on the earth. He had Noah build a boat for years and years and years and years and they thought he was crazy because the flood was coming to destroy the Nephilim, the giants. Mankind was going down the tubes and mankind is going down the tubes again because they become lovers of self rather than lovers of God. And anything flows with that. Any kind of perversion. There are things being accepted right now that people would have been thrown in jail for years ago. Nakedness of men with little boys. Pictures out there. Years ago, that person would have been thrown in jail as a child molester. Pornography. That's child pornography. And we accept it because it's not politically correct to come against these things. It's politically correct for God to come against these things, and he's going to, and he will, and his wrath is coming on the earth against all this manner of evil. Whether you like it or whether I like it. It's going to happen because God has had it with the devil and what he's doing. The same way in the days of Noah, he destroyed the earth. He's, this time it's going to be by fire. And he's going to save his people. The bride's going up and gathered up in the rapture. And those that are left behind are going to go through a lot more hell. It's not a time to take lightly God. 
You need to seriously think about God and you need to seriously think about the lifestyle you're living. And what are you doing with yourself every day? Are you a backbiter? Are you condemning others? Is your quest to try to destroy another human being because you think they're from the pits of hell? That's not our quest. Our quest is to lead them to salvation. To show them the love of Jesus. There are people out on YouTube, okay, that are saying all kinds of things off the scriptures. And you don't even know it because you don't know the word of God. And you listen to them and you follow them all the time. And they're not even speaking scriptures. They're just making up things. Because they themselves are being deceived. We need to know the Bible and what the Bible says is truth. Or we will be deceived. And for those of you when I talk about these things that are out there, I am not defending myself. I don't have to defend myself. I'm walking 47 years with my God. With the power and the fire. And signs and wonders following me. I don't have to defend myself. Because I see God daily do things in my life, in the supernatural realm. I don't need to defend myself before you or anybody else. But what needs to happen, those that are out there speaking lies and deceptions, they need to be rebuked in the name of Jesus. And none of you Christians should be watching any of them. If you know somebody speaking falsehood on another human being, you should not be watching them or giving them any kind of place whatsoever because you might as well sit in front of Satan and let him talk to you. You need to realize that. You need to realize the reprobate minds that are out there and they're speaking through so-called Christians. And that's a scary thing. I saw on the internet the other day a woman who was talking in front of an audience and she was talking about how is the greatest thing the first time she had an abortion. How fantastic it was. And the whole audience clapped. Think about that for one minute. I can see somebody panicking and not feeling they can handle having a baby and going and having that done. In, in their self, they just panic mode. They don't know what to do about it. But to rejoice over it, to make it like it's something wonderful, that's murder. That's what it says in there. Okay, about a reprobate mind. Murder. Those that murder and they think it's an okay thing to do. We know life begins in the womb. So you can't deny it's some form of a murder. Oh, well, we have the right to choose. Every single one of us has the right to choose. God gave us a free will. But the thing is, what are you choosing to do every day? The choice that he gave us, what are we doing with it? Are we backbiting? Are we slandering each other? Are we becoming in one mind and one accord, in love, like we're supposed to be? What are we doing with it? Oh, do we have jealousies over each other? Does it bug you when I smile every time I put my video out? How come she's so happy? Yeah, I know it bothers some of you, because I get the Spirit of God. I already know it. You have no idea what I suffer every day. I come out here in my sufferings. You think I got my life and my acts all together? My acts all together because I worship the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I walk in the power of the fire of the Holy Spirit. I don't walk in my flesh and I don't operate by my flesh. So do I have my act together? I certainly do in the Spirit. Most certainly do. Because I follow Jesus every day of my life. My only interest is to show you the truth because that's what I'm called to do. And that you would learn to love one another and love one another. Truly love one another. I mean really love one another. A lot of you don't even know what true love is. Because you've never experienced it. True love is accepting somebody just the way they are. Faults and all. And you just love them. And you watch God perfect them as they walk in their lives with Jesus. That's true love. Not pointing the finger at somebody and condemning them for maybe they fell on their face or they tripped along the way. That's not true love. <laughs> That's not Jesus. That's not my Jesus. That's not my God either. He's going to get rid of reprobate minds and evil. And you don't know those who might get saved along the way. 
and come out from among them, the Bible says. So what are we to do about it? We're to walk in the holiness and walk before our Father in honesty and sincerity. You have an issue, you bring it to Him and let Him heal you. Let Him deliver you. It doesn't always happen overnight. Sometimes it takes a little time. When you pray in the name of Jesus, there is power in it. I have seen it. I'm seeing it more and more in my life as I surrender my walk with God. When I pray in the name of Jesus, I see things happen. I've been seeing it more and more and more. I've always seen it in my life, but lately it's even stronger. And I've seen more miracles happen. And that's why I'm out here, because I'm here to bring the love of God to you through Jesus. I don't defend myself. If I talk about what's out there, it's because it's a truth. And we need to understand what's reprobate and what's not. If you don't get that some people are reprobates that are out there right now, you're missing it. You're missing it and you're going to follow the devil and his lies. You got to get a heads up on what's reprobate. You realize that a lot of us are not even talking to human beings anymore? We're talking to demons? Nephilim, the demon spirits, the spirits of the giants. They've taken over and obsessed a lot of people's minds. You look at some of these people up there in office and their eyes, how they look. The eyes are the mirror of the soul. You can see the crazed look. A lot of so-called, there's some of these preachers out there, these well-known preachers, have been turned over to reprobate minds. You say, why did that happen? Because obviously they've been sinning. You don't go into preaching the gospel for prosperity. You go into preaching the gospel to save souls from hell. Not to become prosperous. If God prospers you along the way, well, praise the Lord. You use it to help the needy. You, you do whatever you have to do with it. But you don't use it so that you could go get yourself a mansion and two, two Cadillacs and do all... You're not supposed to be interested in anything of the world. We're in the world, we're not of the world. So the world's not supposed to be pulling us and sucking us into it. Nothing of the world should be sucking you into it where it becomes obsessive for you. Nothing. Not even another person. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Because this is just a fleeting time, a moment in time that we pass through and then we're in eternity. So what are we doing with our lives? What are you doing with your life today? Are you following the Spirit? Are you reprobate? Are you having an issue with it? Are you using your free will to do all manner of perversions? If you are, I'm going to pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. And let me tell you something, there's going to be power that shoots. Whatever demonic forces are after your life and trying to weigh you down, if you want to be delivered from it, the Lord will set you free. But if you like your flesh more than you want to walk in the Spirit, it's going to stay there because you have a free will. So Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, the mighty, mighty name of Jesus that you gave us. You gave me that name to use, Father, against all manner of evil that comes at your people, and your people are hurting. Many are hurting with afflictions, Father. They're suffering with demonic obsessions and things that they want to get rid of and they can't. So I'm using that name, your name, Jesus, that you gave me to use. And I use it towards God's people. Those that are out there that are seeking deliverance and wanting to walk the walk in holiness. I am coming against all manner of demonic influence. All of you Nephilim that have tried to take over God's people, the Lord God rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach, and whom the Son sets free, is free indeed. That's as simple as it is, because it's the name. It's not my screaming, it's not my yelling. It's not how many times I use it. It's the name Jesus that goes out and sets the captive free. So, Father, we thank you and set your people free in Jesus' name. Lowe's Vogel Sharp, and I'll be back when he sends me back again. Have a blessed day.